wanted to get 100 miles to gallon on the highway in zero to 60 in sub five seconds. I am designing a car and building a came with new manufacturing process that makes a sustainable, recyclable vehicle. It takes a small fraction of the energy is to create. It's going to get over 100 miles to the gallon. It will do zero to 60 in under five seconds. Mark my words. And the Tesla did 0 to 60 in 4.60 seconds. So effectively identical to the Omega car. The one I drive a lot gets 16 miles to the gallon at best. This gets 104 miles to the gallon. I originally was inspired and pissed off enough to build the Omega car because of the lies of politicians. Big one, 2008. Financial crisis, remember that? The point of the Omega car is to do something that's actually affordable, that lasts a long, long, long time, and is more sustainably recyclable and nicer to the environment than, yes, even an electric car, because <laughs> we're not killing little, any little kids in Africa in a cobalt mine. In the last video, of course, you guys saw we took it out for just a basic drive, and the darn thing got like 104.6 miles per gallon. Uh, so I was very excited about that because my original intention with this car was to build something that would reflect something that's more sustainably recyclable, to be affordable by the mass populace, an actual concept that would be viable and worthwhile the world over, regardless of what kind of drivetrain or power plant you have. But I wanted to make this turbo diesel because it'd be easy for the world to understand what's actually possible when you design cars intelligently. And I wanted it to get over 100 miles a gallon on the highway and beat the Dodge Viper, the original one, zero to 60. Now the original Dodge Viper does zero to 60 in something like four and a half seconds. Keith and I were coming out of the 1980s and uh, that was a while ago, but that's still a very fast car. Now, the Omega car was obviously built to be fuel efficient, uh, less expensive, recyclable, all that jazz. And it wasn't a big, expensive, nasty car with giant tires. This thing is built to do a lot of stuff that the Dodge Viper cannot do. So the question is, is it compromised so much that it can't accelerate well? Hmm, well, we're gonna find out today, but I always like to up the ante. So over there is a 2019 Grand Sport Corvette. Now that particular car, if the online stuff is correct, can do zero to 60 in the area of the high threes, like 3.6, 3.7, give or take. Now, relating to specs in zero to 60 that you see, and performance numbers that you see written about, Zero to 60 of these things are in perfect condition with perfect tires done over and over to get the fastest one by a manufacturer or a reviewer with somebody who is beating the living crap out of the car. Okay. Now, we could do that with this, but again, I am not a giant manufacturer that I feel like beating up and destroying the car. It took forever to build this thing and 10 years of sitting around, so I don't really want to break it. So today's zero to 60 runs are gonna be real. I'm gonna run it. I've got in this thing already that I'm gonna put in every single car a precision accelerometers and GPS that relay those things together in real time to give exact zero to 60 down to the one hundredths of a second. So by doing them back to back, we're going to get a feel of what this can actually do. I don't want you to get all bogged down in the numbers because the Dodge Viper, for instance, the tires are older. It's not going to hook up as well as it would have if it was brand new. And same thing with the Corvette, they're a few years old now. And the Omega car, shoot, it's 10 tires are 10 years old and they're only about that wide. <laughs> the Dodge Vipers are about that wide. So we're gonna see. Also, you all say, well, Casey, you're going to be a, you're not independent, you're biased. Uh, no, I'm not uh, because I have an ego with driving and I like to make things all be well. And if I was going to be biased and fake any of this, what would be the point of showing any of you? It'd be a big waste of time because it would be fake. I don't like being fake. So you will be able to tell that I am genuinely trying to get good zero to 60 times in the Dodge Viper and of course the Corvette because I'm gonna do it a few times and I'm gonna launch it and you will be able to hear the tires at the edge of adhesion. Now, some things I'm not going to do, uh, anything dangerous or anything that will bother anybody else. So I'm going to go far, far away, away from anybody else. Uh, but zero to 60, I think, is a very relevant uh, time to get because if you're pulling away from a stop sign and getting onto a highway, that's what you're gonna do. You're going to accelerate. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And you guys will know it's real because I got a precision instrument for all of those. And you'll simply be able to hear it that I'm giving my best. I don't know what it's gonna do. I know it's quick. So hopefully, we'll at least get it under five seconds. That, that would make me happy, especially with those tires. Now I can, in fact, fit better tires. 
um, and wheels and do some things that will mod this. So my real hope for the Omega car, the other thing is it needs to get repainted. It's been sitting around for 10 years and being in a shop and tested with and everything. So I hope you guys forgive. There's some various waves in the structure of the car and dents and it looks, it looks kind of terrible, especially without the, uh, the fairings on that was originally designed for. So forgive me, it'll look a lot nicer. I want to repaint this thing. Uh, and I think after today, when it gets some good numbers, it's going to deserve um, a fresh set of clothes, shall we say. But um, at some point, I'll probably do some modifications on lots of things relating to the brakes, the tires, all just make it better in terms of the concept. I've already been doing some modifications and things, making the emissions even better, which I, I notice is already having a great effect on cutting down any kind of vapor or smoke. So that's pretty exciting. Just just doing intelligent stuff. So anyway, that's that's really it. Here's the meter. Batteries are a little low, uh, but I found this one to be very accurate. Let's go GPS. Oh, it connected. Okay, cool. There we go. Oh, I guess that's how you start it. so much torque and for the sake of a 0 to 60 run the, the difference between this and like more of a serious sports car muscle car supercar is the gears are shorter because this is made for being a you know high efficiency commuter car i didn't specifically build it to go fast and do tracks and stuff so keep that in mind when we're watching what its intended purpose actually is um the gears are shorter so I will probably end up actually starting it and like launching it in second gear. So there's hopefully only one shift. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, I have to turn it off and that's helpful, right? It has to warm up a little anyway. Connect, please. Oh, is it connected? Yes, it's connected. All right. Can we be 
tweak the Viper. Should I see if I can hit 60 and then without shifting? I don't know. Last time. How nice is that? I got some honey. It was six dollars. It's air conditioned in there and it's the honor system. So I just paid him six dollars. Guess what? In the middle of America, that all the jerks call flyover state, there's still smart people doing good things. All over the place. Okay. Day two. Why is there a day two? Well, frankly, I didn't get to do all the runs I wanted to in the Omega car. I got concerned that it was getting too hot and it's uh, water temperature because the iPad was wildly laggy uh, and I didn't have a feel for what it does in terms of its uh, heating and cooling and all that. And so me, being the guy who built it and of course is invested in it, decide, okay, we're just gonna call it quits here. Discretion is the better part of valor. Live to fight another day, right? Anyway, the car is actually fine and I was being overly worried about it. But I only got two tries to do a zero 60 run in this car. The Viper, I did four runs actually. The Corvette, I think I did three. I did three in the Corvette because frankly, it's automatic and really, 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 really easy to do it in. Uh, and I did it in kind of like sport mode and also race mode and did the best I reasonably can. And the Corvette, the best it could do was mid four second, zero to 60, which is a long way off from the advertised 3.7 seconds. No, I'm not bad at driving a car. I think that uh, GM was wildly optimistic with their numbers and that was very perfect conditions. Which is fascinating because the Viper was supposed to do zero to 60 in four and a half or 4.6 seconds. And even with old tires uh, and it now being an old car, it still did zero to 60, its best run in like 4.8 something. So I would say that Mopar in the 90s was being a lot more honest with their zero to 60 runs than GM. So let's just forget about the Corvette. I think it's irrelevant. The Viper was important to me because I wanted to show what is possible when you think well. But the Viper is an irrelevant car. They made a few hundred of these back then and adjusted for inflation. That'd be a $120,000 car. It doesn't even have side windows, tops, or a lock. Giant, giant tires, giant displacement engine. And that's the best it can do. The one I drive a lot gets 16 miles to the gallon at best. This gets 104 miles to the gallon. Anyway, I did two zero to 60 runs in this. 5.1, I think. So less than three tenths of a second off the Dodge Viper and a tenth of a second away from a sub five second zero to 60. I think it's only fair to have this another run, but let's up the ante to something topical for nowadays. Tesla, yeah. Okay, we all know Teslas in general can do awesome zero to 60s, but let's compare apples to apples in a sense. The Omega car and the Dodge Viper are rear wheel drive. The point of the Omega car is to do something that's actually affordable, that'll last a long, long, long time, and is more sustainably recyclable and nicer to the environment than, yes, even an electric car, because <laughs> we're not killing little, any little kids in Africa in a cobalt mine. But anyway, the Tesla. Ooh, we got a Model 3 here. This is the rear wheel drive, long range Tesla. Now I hear it can do 300 miles on a charge. The batteries are still good. Um, but my Omega car is a five gallon tank, which means now over five, over hundred miles a gallon, it is over a hundred, 500 mile range. So, but this is about the best Tesla can do and it's rear wheel drive. So that seems fair on a zero to 60 thing. So I think the first thing we need to do is launch this Tesla. That's it. Oh, beans. Whoa, I didn't go fast enough. I thought I'd be there by now. Okay, sorry. Fire gun, fire gun. Okay. Here we go. Remember, Casey, it's Tesla. I don't even have to push the brakes. Just smash the gas. Okay, let's see what it does. Here we go. 50, there's 60 miles an hour. Interesting, 4.6 dead flat. And bonk. Four point six four. Okay, well, I don't see there's much reason to doing that anymore. There's zero wheel spin. 
and I don't have to have my foot on the brake for it to just sit there stationary and all I have to do is go bonk with the throttle. Uh, so nothing's gonna reasonably make that faster and it'll probably just keep getting slower. How do you turn this thing off? Do I swipe my card? Are my social credit score good enough to use this thing? lunch so I could relax a little and calm down and actually intelligently speak and it's a shame in a way that it waited 10 years to get the Omega car out but I've been busy with life getting a family going and uh, doing genius garage and helping lots of students get their jobs in industry but it's sort of sad that I waited so long because the car did exactly what I originally intended it to I wanted to get 100 miles a gallon on the highway in 0 to 60 in sub 5 seconds that's exactly what it did over 18 miles, I burned exactly 22 ounces of diesel, which translated to something like 104.5 miles to the gallon. And that included stop signs and slowing down for railroad tracks. But that wasn't even highway driving. I think my new goal should be getting 128 miles to the gallon because that'll be one ounce per mile. Not to mention the fact that when I drove it, I didn't even have the aerodynamic fairings on. All the bodywork wasn't on. I just didn't bother putting it on because I wanted it to be easy, just get a quick, you know, rugged, dirty test, proper numbers. That's what I did. Zero to 60 runs, being nice to the car, it beat the Dodge Viper. And I ran the Di Viper really well, really hard. I've got tens of thousands of miles of driving Dodge Vipers and I know how to make the thing go. The Dodge Viper came zero to 60 in at 4.8 in some seconds. And then I think its next fastest run was 5.1 seconds. The Omega car did 4.61 seconds. And then it had another run of 4.62 had another run of 4.8, and its next slowest run was 5.1 on the first day when I was being very careful with it. Ah, but what's even more interesting is the Tesla got my neighbor's Model 3, which is a two-wheel drive Tesla and long range, because I thought that would be the most fair comparison to, of course, a two-wheel drive Omega car and a two-wheel drive Dodge Viper. And the Tesla did 0 to 60 in 4.60 seconds. So effectively identical to the Omega car. 
And the next one was 4. I think 8 seconds slower. The Omega car's second fastest time was faster than that also. And keep in mind the Tesla doesn't have to shift. It has computers controlling every aspect of launch and traction control of everything. So everything is perfect, like a laboratory environment for it. Which is to say that the Omega car and the Viper are actually capable of going quite a bit faster, even with some just basic computer help. But the point, that was not the point of the Omega car. The original point of the Omega car was that we are manufacturing cars wrongly, badly, and stupidly the world over. Ah, but those descriptors only matter when you consider things like people and affordability and the environment and cars la lasting. If you just want to profit and have power, well, then maybe we're doing exactly right. But keep in mind the industrialized world is built upon steel and powered by oil and things don't change very easily, even if there's a better way to do it. Well, it was obvious to me that we have a lot of better ways to do it. Now, I use diesel because I thought it would be the easiest for the world to understand just how efficient you can make a car. Because there are already fantastic drivetrains and power sources and energy sources out there. And millions and trillions upon dollars on developing those things. But the point is simple. We make cars badly. We do industry badly for the sake of tomorrow, the world, people, and the environment. I don't like doing things badly. That's why I built the Omega car. The other thing that was interesting about the Tesla I learned today from my neighbor, you know, if you fill it up with electricity juice at home, it could be pretty cheap. But if you want to go anywhere, because it's a car, you got to go to a supercharging station. And if you supercharge your Tesla to get full range, it might cost you 30 or $40. Well, that's interesting because the Omega car has a five gallon tank and easily getting over hundred miles a gallon, that's over a 500 mile range. So let's equal it out. That Tesla allegedly is supposed to get 300 mile range. So let's only give the Omega car a three gallon tank. So it has the same range. What's three gallons of diesel cost? It might depend on whether you have a Republican or Democrat in office, but somewhere it's gonna be somewhere from $2 to $5. No matter how you do that math, the Omega car is a small fraction of the cost to operate. And you can fill up anywhere in America or the world. For that matter, it's not that hard to make diesel. It's not that hard to make diesel out of waste. People have done it from the leftover oil from the fast food industry, leftover products and waste from the meat industry. And you can make it out of biological things based upon farms and other waste. It's a very flexible fuel. But the thing to keep in mind with all this and what I've done with the Omega car and where I wanna go with my own materials science design and engineering company, it's about doing things efficiently and more intelligently because that is the mindset that is better for everyone tomorrow. I can promise you that politicians are fools. They're people that talk and they peddle concepts and ideas and lies to get votes, to take power, to be backed by super PACs, industry, wealthy donors, so those things can get their way and not necessarily represent the people. Screw that. I originally was inspired and pissed off enough to build the Omega car because of the lies of politicians. Big one, 2008. Financial crisis, remember that? Remember that presidential election? Remember 2012? Remember 2016? There's a lot of lies way back when. There's a lot of lies now. And last time I checked, if you have a less expensive and more flexible fuel and you can make something recyclable for less energy and less environmental impact that's more affordable by the people, i.e. what the Omega car is, you don't have a bunch of little kids dying in cobalt and lithium mines the world over and controlled by different countries. Because you know the funny thing is about the Tesla and electric car like that? I gotta swipe a card to get in it. And it's connected to satellites and the internet and the company. It can also be connected to the governments. So at what point does my card no longer work in it? At what point when it's not my property anymore, at what point do they control you? That's food for thought. I'm not gonna to go too far that down that rabbit hole, but I hope you enjoyed this. I've been very excited. So that's it. Internet, conspiracy theories, do your best. Also, I'm in very good health. I am a happy person that's well-balanced and have a nice life. Uh, and I intend to keep doing good things like Genius Garage. I want to do a startup company relating to the Omega car and uh, shall we say more environmentally friendly and better materials to make everything from home goods and interesting furniture to cars and car parts. Gonna try to do that. Got some ideas for building a much better school and fixing all the problems 
that is the American educational system. So if anybody's interested in any of those things, and you'd like to do it with me, I know how to make the things happen. See you guys next time. It's going to get over 100 miles to the gallon. It will do zero to 60 in under five seconds. Mark my words.